Tonight, close to a billion dollars set aside to get more health staff in regional areas, including Broken Hill and the Far West. And workers left stunned as a man allegedly armed with a knife steals money from a Wyala Nori fast food restaurant. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Health in regional and rural New South Wales is set to get a boost with over $880 million in funding. The scheme is being touted as the largest shake-up of its kind the state has ever seen. Joshua Mercer reports. The funding will not only see more workers come to regional and rural New South Wales, but it will ensure that health staff that are already working in places like Broken Hill are retained. The funds will be delivered in the form of new training and recruitment pathways to build a pipeline of regional-based workers. Totaling close to a billion dollars, the investment aims to future-proof healthcare in the bush. The funding will be spent over the next four years, targeting critical and hard-to-fill roles to ensure the operation of health facilities, meaning more staff in fields such as midwifery, nursing, paramedics, pathologists and even ancillary staff just to name a few. It also means that a number of incentives will be rolled out for existing healthcare professionals, which can include salary boosts, retention payments, additional leave, assistance with transport and housing support, as well as access to training and education. The Minister for Regional Health, Bronnie Taylor, says the recruitment and retention package could be worth up to $10,000 each year while Treasurer Matt Keane says the best quality health care shouldn't be a postcode lottery. Overall, today's announcement is good news for Broken Hill and Surrounds, meaning more health care professionals will not only come to the city, but they will actually stay. A terrifying incident at a fast food joint in Wyala Norrie yesterday after a man allegedly armed with a knife entered the restaurant and stole money from the till. Police have released this CCTV still image which depicts the man they want to speak to. The alleged offence unfolded around 4.15 yesterday afternoon. Police say the man in question entered the McDool Stewart Avenue business and threatened staff before taking money and leaving on foot. Thankfully, no one was physically injured. The suspect is described as being of Caucasian appearance between 5'5 and 5'9 in height with a solid muscular build. And at the time, he was wearing a black hoodie with beige pants, black shoes and a balaclava. Anyone who saw anything suspicious around that time is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Meantime, Saypol has allegedly caught up with a man with meth in his possession in Solomon Town. Officers pulled over a four-wheel drive he was the passenger in on Tuesday morning. Following a search of the car, police found 5.8 grams of methamphetamine in the passenger side, as well as a small amount of cannabis and drug smoking implements. The 32-year-old man was reported for possession of a trafficable quantity of meth. The Selix Beach man was also issued with a drug diversion for possessing the equipment. He's been summoned to appear in court at a later date. It's short-term pain for long-term gain for residents at Fisherman's Bay as the popular tourist destination will be a construction site for the next 18 to 24 months. Today commemorated the start of a $20 million project. Today marks the start of the largest investment ever seen in one of South Australia's most iconic shack communities. The event attracted members of Parliament, past mayors and members of the public to celebrate the start of a bright future for the small coastal locality. This has been a, a, a long project for the people of Fisherman Bay. Their, their land was tied up in basically community title. Um, it came from its, its historical origins and so it's been difficult to sort of bring it into the 21st century if you like. Fresh off the back of officially being declared the federal member for Grey. Rowan Ramsey says the freehold title will unlock a heap of investment in Fisherman Bay, adding that coastal areas in South Australia aren't getting any bigger. And there are people with money who want to build substantial places uh, in, in some of these communities and uh, if you don't own the land that's, that, that's a bit of a risk. Fisherman Bay Management and Barunga West Council have had to overcome many obstacles to secure this project. 
but have kept the widespread benefits for the community in mind. They will receive essential services like um, wastewater, um, uh, infrastructure and they'll have coastal protection measures like um, sea walls, they'll have new roads, they'll have stormwater infrastructure, um, they will be brought up to um, contemporary standards from an infrastructure point of view. To learn more about this groundbreaking infrastructure project visit Barunga Council's website. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, time's running out to get your nominations in for South Australia Police Officer of the Year Awards. And T-minus 10 days until the 40th instalment of the Pitchy Ritchie Marathon. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. Some tragic news out of SA Health today, confirming a child under the age of three who tested positive for COVID-19 has passed away. The cause of death is yet to be determined and has been referred to the coroner as per standard process. The child was one of six COVID-related deaths recorded across South Australia today. It's that time of year when members of the public are asked to reflect and thank those who keep us safe when we need them. If there's a police officer who's gone above and beyond for you, now is the time to nominate them for SA Police Officer of the Year Award. Nominations are now open for the 2022 South Australia Police Officer of the Year Award. Superintendent Mark Cyrus is the officer in charge of the York Mid-North Local Service Area and hopes to see the award go to a regional officer this year. Is, uh, this has been in, in place since uh, 1978 and um, over the years predominantly the country members have received those awards but over the last uh, two years uh, the, it's been picked up by our metropolitan counterparts so uh, in 2022 I'd like to see that being brought back to the regions. When deciding who to nominate think of someone who has gone above and beyond their duties. It might be a, an act of kindness, a, a, a a bit of compassion in a very complex case um, or some, uh, some community volunteering. This award was initiated by the Rotary Club of Unley to increase awareness of the policing role in the community and offers an opportunity for community members to thank those who keep us safe. And we're asking members of the community to identify a police officer that have, has um, provided a high level of, of service in their community. To nominate a police officer, visit the Rotary Club of Unley and download a form to fill out. Nominations close on Friday 22nd of July 2022. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Pitchy Ritchie Marathon is just around the corner and organisers are expecting this anniversary instalment to be bigger than ever. Top athletes, including long-distance runner Steve Monaghetti, will descend upon the region to run the gruelling race between Port Augusta and Corn. Warming up for the big race. The team behind this year's Pitchy Ritchie Marathon say their preparations are nearing the finish line. Working really, really hard at this, getting it organised. With registrations closing in just three days, organisers say the number of athletes participating in the event is looking good. Many runners travelling for this instalment of the race as it doubles as the marathon's 40th birthday. The Flinders Rangers Mayor says the event has been a consistent drawcard for the region over those years and expects this year to be even better. We've been doing it for 40 years, so uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a great, it's a collaboration between uh, us and the Lions Club. Both council staff and volunteers will be out on the day of the race, setting up road signs and water stations along the famous Pitchy Ritchie Pass. Just a beautiful location, anybody that's done that drive. So it's great for publicity for the region, um, for towns like Corn and Port Augusta. The event also receiving a financial boost to help get tired legs home after the race. So we've received a, a, a grant to help us uh, bus competitors and others around the place. The marathon will take place next weekend on Sunday the 26th of June. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break, a call out to Wyala residents to start entering their arts and goods into the upcoming show. 
and from laser tag to skateboarding demonstrations, Broken Hills Active Fest is set to kickflip into the Silver City. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. The Wyala Show Committee are rearing up to provide the community with another spectacular show this year. Looking ahead to the August event, organisers are now asking for entries in their local talents displays. We will be picking up a show bag before we know it. The crew behind the Wyler Show are hard at work organising everything to ensure that this year's event will be the biggest show in recent years. The Wilder Show is well underway for preparation. Tickets are on sale through Try Booking. We've got the entertainment book. The storeholders are coming in fast. It's all underway. Right now, organisers are reaching out to the community for entries in their many competitions. The Show Society setting up different displays each year to showcase local talent. Our competitions are back, so get all your arts and crafts out, all the jams, your garden wares, all the competitions are back. Please check out our website. On the entertainment side, everyone's favourite show rides will return to turn people's stomachs inside out. Carnival games, live music and stage shows are also in the pipeline. This year we've got an amazing dinosaur act that we've never had to wireler before, so you need to come out and have a look. It's very interactive, something for everybody. Wyala was one of the only regional centres that was able to hold a large-scale show under COVID restrictions last year. Now, with many of those restrictions lifted, organisers say this year will continue the event's return to form. We're very happy to have those conditions lifted this year and have much more of a normal show, but it took a mammoth effort from a lot of people and we were so happy to, to run again because we really needed to. Edwin McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill City Council, along with the state government, are putting on Active Fest, a free day for families to get out and be active. There'll be lots of fun things to do with free laser tag, giveaways and workshops by Tennis New South Wales and Totem Skateboarding. It's time for the community to get active this winter. Broken Hill City Council and the New South Wales Government are bringing Active Fest to Broken Hill with lots of fun things to do. A massive focus of the company is to make sure that we're giving those events and we're activating, uh, giving opportunities to kids in regional towns. Nigel is the creative director of Totem Skateboarding. Coming from the town of Leeton in the Riverina, he knows how important it is not only for kids to get out and be active, but to have the facilities at their disposal. You know, this festival is all about movement and act, being active. Skateboarding is just our vehicle for the, for the message that we're trying to uh, relay is just to be active in whatever you want to do. Those who have already booked to take part in Totem's workshop will be in for a treat. And the experience will cater for everyone, from beginners all the way up to the more experienced skater. So we've got a beginner's workshop. We've also got an intermediate mentoring class. So that's a more laid back approach to, um, to the next level of skating. If you do miss out on a spot in the Active Fest workshop, don't worry, as the Totem team will be back in the school holidays. You know, I didn't think we'd go out to Broken Hill twice in two weeks, but, you know, it's a bit of a drive, but it's, you know, that's a part of the country that we just love you know, seeing and, you know, being a part of. Active Fest gets underway at Sturt Park at 10am this Sunday. And who knows, maybe the next Olympic skateboarder is right here in the Silver City. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. If you're planning on heading to the Monday Monday Bash in August, you better get in quick as tickets are almost sold out. Festival organisers say around 80% of available tickets have already been snapped up Midnight Oil are headlining the three-day event and it's also the last time fans will be able to see the iconic Aussie band perform on the Red Earth. It will be a fitting farewell performance as the Monday Monday Plains is the very location where they filmed their iconic Beds Are Burning film clip. Tickets to the family and dog-friendly event can be purchased online. Kids under 11 can go in for free and it's all happening from August 18th to the 20th. Thank you.
Stay with us after the break. What's biting and where? Thursday fish and tips with the experts from across the Spencer Gulf. And we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Gulf News. Time now to take a look at what's biting in the waters off the Spencer Gulf. Let's kick things off with Aaron Morgan in Port Augusta for Thursday Fish and Tips. G'day and welcome to this week's Fish and Tips from Port Augusta, Joel the North. Well, it's really nice weather at the moment, nice calm nights. That moon's uh, up, so the garfish are going a little bit deep if you're out there trying to dab for them. Lots and lots of squid getting caught down on the shacks, as you expect this time of year. Uh, King George Whiting, I think a little bit sparse at the moment. Uh, a bit like the crabs this year, they found a little bit further north up around the uh, Port Patterson area. And there's still some crabs getting caught as well. Uh, as usual, take a little bit while to get on the bite. And uh, then they're actually a couple of guys bagged out on crabs, so that's been a good sign as well. That's all we have from the drill and off. Hi, Wyala's fishing tips this week. Some really good land-based fishing available right across Wyala. The local foreshore holding some good numbers of silver whiting. Also some nice garfish being caught in the same areas as well. A little bit further south to Cowlitz Landing, there's been some nice silver whiting and also a few garfish coming off the land there as well. Um, down towards Point Lowly, really big numbers of salmon are coming in from pretty much all locations. Get out there, guys. Pilchards and lures have been the best go-to um, to catch those salmon. For for the boat anglers, some really good numbers of King George Whiting hitting the table right across Wyala, the southern and northern end of the Eastern Shoal, down towards Mount Young and even further north around Point Lowly. There's been some really good bag limits of King George Whiting hitting the table from there also. Welcome another week around the Gulf Fishing Tips. I tell you what, this cold weather is a bit of blah, but isn't it? But it gives us the best opportunity to catch our King George Whiting and they're starting to come on in big numbers. So a lot of the places we want to talk to you about today around the Port Davis area and all that sort of stuff are really starting to work. So just watch your weather patterns. It's starting to fine up. I think we're going to have some reasonable days over this coming weekend. So work along the, the shallow banks at uh, Port Davis. When you come round to the Port Pirie side of things, it's Third Creek onwards out to Fifth Creek. And then if you go to Checkerboy and also Eastern Shoal, you shouldn't miss on King George Whiting. But whilst we're there, there's a lot of things happening as well. We've got some salmon around the place, which are always good fun for the kids. I recommend that you'd probably look at the second to third creek runoffs. You'll be able to get yourself a good feed of those. If you're still desperately keen, a checker boy will give you a feed of blue swimmer crabs, but I really think you could need any more at this, at this particular moment. And just be careful, whilst you're in that second, third creek area, we've got a lot of snapper drops in there, and you, know, you never know if one of those might just absolutely jump on your line. So just be careful, make sure that your baits are small and all that sort of stuff, and never, never come home without throwing a squid jag over, because there's plenty of those fellas out there in big tubes at the moment. So a great idea to stuff them and cook them, in the oven, absolutely gorgeous. That's all we have this week. We'll see you next week. Lots of good tips there as per usual. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, it was cold in Sejuna this morning. It certainly was, Maddie, especially in comparison to the night before, which was 13 degrees. This morning, it was just 3.4 degrees at 4 a.m. It was a bit drizzly and wooden today, reaching 18 degrees at 2.30. Cleve got to a high of 14 and Coffin Bay reached 16 at 1.20 this afternoon. Looking at the rest of the region's weather map now and Cooper Pedy was 19 degrees today. It reached 17 degrees in Port Augusta, Port Lincoln and Port Piri. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a high pressure system centred over the state will move slowly eastwards tomorrow, then move over the Tasman Sea on Saturday and winds will tend northerly. A cold front will move in into the far west late Sunday, then move across remaining parts on Monday. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Winds will be variable below 10 knots, becoming northeasterly in the evening and increasing to 15 knots. Seas below a metre, south to southwesterly swell below a metre. Between 8 and 17 degrees in Port Lincoln and also in Cleve tomorrow, Woodner will be mostly sunny and 20 degrees. 17 in Wyala and Cadiz mostly sunny and 19 in Port Augusta. Between 6 and 18 degrees in Port Pirie on Friday, Clare partly cloudy and 15, bit of cloud coverage over at Broken Hill. 
with a top of 16 degrees there as well. Taking a look further through the week now, Saturday is looking clear at this stage. Temperatures in the late teens to early 20s. The rain will be back in Port Lincoln, Wyala and Woodna on Sunday. The Silver City will be partly cloudy and 15 degrees for Active Fest, which kicks off at 10 a.m. at Sturt Park. And taking a quick peek at what Monday is looking like, possible showers in Woodna and Wyala, 19 degrees. Possible showers in Port Lincoln as well, one degree cooler and 18. Cooper Pedy is looking clear on Monday, 23 degrees, 19 in Broken Hill. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. Maddie, it's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Thursday. I'm Madeline Kerr. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.